Fact. Every 21 seconds, someone in this country sustains a traumatic brain injury. In Indiana alone, more than 10,000 people sustain a traumatic brain injury every year. Fact. Traumatic brain injury is the leading cause of death and disability in children and young adults. Fact. Nearly 50% of all people who have suffered traumatic brain injury were intoxicated at the time of their injury, intoxicated by drugs and or alcohol. Traumatic brain injury, also called head injury, occurs when a blow or jolt to the head results in damage to the brain. Some of the major causes of traumatic brain injury include falls, motor vehicle accidents, motorcycle accidents, different types of violence, sporting events, and recreational activities. Traumatic brain injuries can range from mild, such as concussions, to severe, where the person can lose consciousness for hours or even up to weeks. Any traumatic brain injury, whether mild or severe, can result in short or long-term disability. My name is Jody Perry. I am a survivor of a traumatic brain injury. My life stopped and began again about 13 years ago. I grew up in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, where as a youth I was involved in 4-H where I rode and I showed horses. My brother and I would ride three-wheelers out in the desert every day. My family and I would go boating and water skiing usually twice a week. In high school, I was in the marching band and I played on the tennis team. This is the stage of my life when I became interested in law enforcement. My father worked for the Sheriff's Department and he was on the search and rescue team. We had many family friends that were in law enforcement. Around the same time, my family and I assisted the FBI with the bank robbery, kidnapping, attempted murder case. Working on this case with the FBI really piqued my interest in law enforcement. I knew this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I went to Northern Arizona University and I earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. After being hired and spending six months in the state police academy, which was the worst, most agonizing, miserable six months of my life, I had my dream job. I had my dream job. I had a dream life. And in a split second, everything changed. It was early in the morning, about 2 a.m. on May 30th, 1995. It was raining very hard. It had been all night. I was assigned to answer a residential burglar alarm. I was new to the call. As I went around a curve, my car began to hydroplane. I slid sideways, went up an embankment, and slammed into a tree. The front door on the passenger side is what made the initial impact. My crash was reconstructed, and they figured I was traveling between 55 and 60 miles an hour when I hit the tree. Due to the impact with the tree, and because I was not wearing my seatbelt, the left side of my head hit the top of my door frame, and that's where I sustained a traumatic brain injury. Help did arrive shortly. When they found me, I was unconscious, I was breathing four breaths per minute, and I had fluid draining from my ears. I was taken by helicopter to the University of Massachusetts Medical Center, where I was in a coma for two weeks, and I was put in a halo vest because I fractured my neck in three places. I fractured C2, C3, and C5. When I came out of my coma, I was transferred to a rehabilitation hospital in Connecticut, where I stayed for another six weeks. During this time, I was getting physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, recreational therapy, and neuropsychological services. After being released from my six-week stay at the rehab hospital in Connecticut, I came to live with my parents in Indiana. Here, I did another year of outpatient rehab. I worked on improving the deficits that I was still experiencing. I define deficit as a loss of function or a loss of ability, something that you can still do, but you can't do it as well as you used to do it or as well as you are required to do it. Even though I have received more therapy than the average traumatic brain injury survivor, and even though I've recovered very well, I do have deficits that I will live with for the rest of my life. Because these deficits are what they are, I can no longer be an active state trooper. I can no longer work at any type of hazardous duty job. Some of these deficits include mental fatigue and a time split vision. I tend to run words together, get tongue twisted. My voice is softer, quieter, it's lower. I have to make a conscious effort to speak up and project my voice. I have difficulty with short-term memory. 
I have difficulty with speed of reasoning, decision making, and word search. The right side of my body is a cross between feeling numb and asleep. My eye-hand coordination, executive functioning, and my balance is off. Most importantly, keep in mind that all my deficits get worse as I get tired. Sleep and rest are now very important play in parts of my life. All these deficits are due to traumatic brain injury. One blow to the left side of my head caused all this. Some days my deficits are more obvious than other days, but they are always with me. Traumatic brain injury survivors are often referred to as the walking wounded. Because the general public knows little to nothing about traumatic brain injury, and because I look normal, I have to educate the public about my limitations, all while dealing with my own cognitive deficiencies. Life is good today, but that didn't come easy. I worked my tail off to get to where I am now. I gave my recovery a consistent 100% effort, and I still try to keep a strong and positive attitude. Just as important to my recovery was my strong family support and the resources that I had available to me. I'm doing this video today to educate people about traumatic brain injury. If you, a loved one, or a family member have recently experienced traumatic brain injury, stay strong and know that there is hope.